we are just about ready to start game two of the day for the Seahawks. Sal Regina will be facing the Eagles of Juniata College. Lineups are in. Warm-ups are completed. Juniata just came over from its previous game. Salve's previous game was an 11-3 walk-off win for the Seahawks. 11-3 over WPI, where Lexi Susie had a second-inning grand slam. She is a leadoff hitter again in today's second game. She'll be facing starting pitcher. Lydia Gober of Juniata College. We are here in the top of the first. Second pitch in from Gorber is a strike. Salve is the away team in this game with Juniata. Juniata with gold and navy blue on the uniforms. They are the home team. Put in play by Susie. From her knees, the third baseman. Lindsay Kosicki throws across the diamond to get Susie out. At first base, four. The Eagles is Holly Bettinger. Gorber, the pitcher, is a senior from Portage, Pennsylvania. Second batter in the Seahawk lineup is Kelly Davin. She meets Gorber's first pitch for a single up the middle. Gavin is playing in right field once again for the Seahawks. And she's followed in the lineup by the Seahawks second baseman, number 11, senior Jenner Adeen. Adeen had a couple of hits in game two, game one against WPI. Adeen fouls off Gorba's first pitch to the left side. Sal Virginia is in the third base dugout today, as it was for the first game against WPI, and Judy Otter is in the first base dugout. Ball high to Adeen, a one-on-one -on -one count. Sarah Ramsey instructs Kelly Davin to get back to first base after that pitch. Coach G. Polito has the third base box. Sarah Ramsey has the first base box. That ball was 20 feet in the dirt in front of Adeen. Two and one count. One out here in the Top of the first inning, South Virginia University versus Juniata College. Adeen shot gets by the third baseman, Kosicki. First and second for the Seahawks with catcher Genevieve Benoit. She hit the walk-off home run in game one against WPI. Made the score 11-3 in the bottom of the fifth inning. Eight-run mercy rule was applied and Sal Virginia enjoyed its second victory of the season. They are now two and five as they start with Juniata College. <laughs> Run is at first and second. Davin on board with a hit through the right side. She's now at second base. And Nadine on board first with hit down the third base line. Benoit swings through that pitch. Takes a good cut at another Gorber offering. Gets strike two. Speed pitch, gets a swinging on the ball that lands in the dirt. Catcher makes a nice grab on it. Two outs now for 
And the fifth batter of the inning, third baseman Kyle O'Reilly. Kyle O'Reilly had an RBI ground out in the first game, contributing to one of 11 Seahawk runs. Third baseman Kosicki makes the play unassisted on the field of choice grounder for O'Reilly. After a one inning of play, two hits for the Seahawks, but no runs. We come to the bottom of the second, bottom of the first correction, after this break. here in Claremont, Florida. Sunny Hancock Park, Field 1. Dominique Burnham's on the game for South Virginia University against Juniata College. The Eagles are getting their first at bat in the bottom of the first. Leading off of the Eagles is their shortstop. Allie Barney, Bainey. She looks at a ball in the dirt. Bainey is a freshman infielder from State College, Pennsylvania. Bainey sees Burnham's first three offerings outside the strike zone. That pitch right down the middle, fouled off. But no, it sets up out wide. Ball comes inside off the fists of Bainey swinging. She runs down to first, but it's a foul behind the plate. Burnham's next offering, inside, called strike three. First out of the bottom of the first. That brings up the second baseman for Juniata. She is number five, Nakia Ulrich from Homer, New York. Also a freshman. She follows Bainey in the order. Ray 
right over the plate for a strike two. The Seahawk faithful are on the third base bleachers. Getting plenty of sun now after the fog is lifted from the 9 a.m. game. This 11 a.m. game got underway probably about 25 past the hour. Between innings, we'll bring you some interviews with two of the stars from South Virginia's first game today. Lexi Susi, who hit a grand slam among her three hits. Another strikeout looking for Burnham on the mound. She gets Ulrich down on strikes. Two outs here in the bottom of the first. Rachel Smith takes the plate. She's a senior from Martinsburg, Pennsylvania. The catcher for Junior Otter grounds it to third. Off the O'Reilly glove, reaches base safely. It'll be an E5 on that play. And perhaps not related, but same last name, Allie Smith is the designated hitter from Mount Union, Pennsylvania. She is the cleanup hitter for the Eagles. She has Rachel Smith on first base with two outs here in the bottom of the first. Burnham works her outside on that pitch, gets the call strike. Rachel Smith takes a more than one-third lead off the bag at first after the pitch. Trying to draw the attention of Genevieve Benoit behind the plate. Benoit sets up inside. A little fister in the air. Caught by third baseman O'Reilly for the final out of the bottom of the th first inning. No runs. No hits, one left for the Eagles in that frame. We'll be back after this message. for four day in game one of our two games here on March 11th. Uh, Lexi, you had a leadoff double in the first inning, scored, and your grand slam in the second inning uh, gave Sal Virginia a lead that they held on to. Talk about what your experience was like at the plate today. Um, well, usually I overthink everything, so today it was just like a carefree attitude and just like swung at, which is that I thought we're good. It's just what was the feeling like rounding the bases on a grand know, slam? I didn't even know it went out. I was like sprinting to second because I thought it was going to be a double. And then I saw it go and I was like, oh my gosh. And that's basically it. And then when I got the other ones, it was just like a good feeling because I've been like not hitting that one. All right. How's the team looking for uh, game game two against we're Juniata? Ready. We're ready. We're, this is like our team right here. We haven't been strong enough to play, but now we're here. And it's like we finally found the missing piece. Bring it all Excellent. Thanks, Lexi. Yeah, okay. <laughs> we'll join the broadcast and the interview with 
Genevieve Benoit when we come back from the second frame. Sarah Nelson leads off the top of the second with a ground at her first base unassisted. That brings freshman first baseman Lauren Fountain to the plate for the Seahawks. She uh, had a good time when Lexi Susie was being interviewed and tried to keep cracking her smile, but Susie did a great job with her first interview as a college softball player. We've got one out here in the top of the second inning. Gover's on the pitcher circle for the Eagles. That pitch to her battery mate, Rachel Smith, is high. No score here in the top of the second. shot by Fountain through the infield and onto the outfield grass. She's got a nice big turn at first because there's nobody there. Ball comes in from left fielder Katie Schrader. Fountain's on first with a one out single. Designated hitter Lauren Nicholson at the plate for the Seahawks. She had a double against WPI. Seahawks are making noise on their bench, with their bench, as Nicholson puts the ball in center field for a base hit. First and second, one out for Nikki Bukowski. Seahawks shortstop. Bukowski shows bunt, pulls away at the last second. <laughs> Starting to feel a lot warmer out here than it did at 9 a.m. Nothing but light clouds and blue skies. South Virginia is playing on the same field that just defeated WPI on with an 11-3 victory in the 9 a.m. start. It's field one at Hancock Park in Clermont, Florida. That bunt is gonna allow Bukowski to reach first base safely and load the bases. It was just dead in there, right in front of the plate. Third baseman Kosicki came in to get a glove on it, but she had no throw. Nicholson moves to second, Fountain to third. Zikowski at first for the top of the order for the Seahawks. We've seen this situation already today. Lexi Susi at the plate with the bases loaded. In the second inning against WPI, she had a grand slam. We are now recording on our camera and hopefully can capture the, a similar big hit. Speed pitch from Gorber lands in for a strike. <laughs> Two.
two out, space is loaded, ball put in the air by Susie. Susie will get credit for the sacrifice fly. Kelly Davin now at the plate for the Seahawks, the right fielder. She had a single in her first at bat. Salve is now on top, 1-0 here in the top of the second inning. Thanks to the sacrifice fly from freshman center fielder Lexi Susi. All three runners advanced on that sacrifice fly. Davin gets thrown out at first, shortstop to first base to end the top of the second, but the Seahawks push across a run. One run on Lexi Susie's sacrifice fly. We'll be back after this. Here with Genevieve Benoit, uh, before game two against Juniata College, uh, you just had a walk-off home run. What was that feeling like? Yes, oh my, it felt great, it felt great. Um, I think I've been waiting for that. I've been waiting for that, batting forth. Um, and I think the energy was great today all around. And I think not only did I hit well, but I mean, our leadoff batter hit a grand slam. I mean, when do you see that? And I think all around the order, we all hit so well. So I think it contributed to it as a whole. Genevieve, you've had a hit safely in all seven games for the Seahawks. Talk about your approach at the plate. Um, I think this year, I'm more relaxed at the plate, um, to say the least. Um, I'm very confident um, where I am in the batting order, and I think that helps as well. I also think that coach did a phenomenal job preparing us um, this preseason at the plate, so kudos to her as well. You've handled three different pitches so far behind the plate as the catcher. Mm -hmm. uh, talk about Kelsey Borman's game in, uh, against WPI. Kelsey had a phenomenal game. As a freshman stepping up, starting in Florida, that's tough, that's tough. And she was hitting all her spots, all of her pitches were working, and she most definitely was the biggest contributor to our win this morning. Well, congratulations thank and you look forward much. to your success against Juniata. Thank you, thank you. Thanks. We are back here. We are back here live with game two action against Juniata College, and we're in the bottom of the second. Seahawks push across a run in the their top of the second. Alexi Susi sacrifice fly with the bases loaded. Moved three runners around. And scoring a run for the Seahawks was their first baseman, Lauren Fountain. Salve's back out on defense now. Dominique Burnham. Delivering pitches to the leadoff batter in the bottom of the second for the Eagles. It's their center fielder, Paige Dennison. She bats from the left-hand side. She made the put out on Lexi Susie's sacrifice fly in the top of the second. Vernon's got plenty of sunshine to work under this, this afternoon or this morning. 15 minutes away from midday. Ball four to Dennison. She works a leadoff walk. Brings up the third, ba third baseman for the Eagles, Lindsey Kosicki. Kosicki is a freshman as well on the Eagle roster. From Patton, Pennsylvania, squares the bunt, gets it down in fair territory. O'Reilly with the glove and the throw. Nobody's covering third. Nelson gets in there. Throw gets away from Nelson at the third base bag. And Dennison will score a run. Sacrifice bunt for Kosicki, and Dennison comes all the way around from first. 1-1 one, one game here in the bottom of the second. Riley. 
Kylie to Adine on the putout with a sacrifice bunt from Kosicki. Fielder Katie Schrader at the plate for the Eagles. Schrader is a junior from Kempton, Pennsylvania. That ball is going to land in the infield. And Schrader's got enough speed to beat it out to first base. Ball did not leave the infield, but hung up in the air between. Pikowski and Adine at second. Schrader's on first with one out. That brings up the right fielder, Holly Renninger. Her first time facing Burnham. In the bottom of the second at Hancock Park in Claremont, Florida. Dot Richardson Spring Games featuring Salve Virginia University and Juniata College. We have a tie score, 1-1. Seahawks scored in their top of the second. Juniata already has one in the bottom of the second. Inside pitch is called a strike. Benoit runs at the runner. Chases her back to first, forcing her to dive. Davin gets the loose ball out in right field. And Schrader is able to make it all the way to third base on the error. Eagles have the potential go-ahead run at third base. With one out here in the bottom of the second. Renninger. The right fielder for the Eagles at the plate. Her first at bat against Salve Regina. She is a freshman from Adamstown, Pennsylvania. Three other games going around us on this complex at Hancock Park. Benoit pounces on the, the ball as it spins into foul territory off the bat from Renninger. That was a bun attempt. Makes the count 0 and 2 on Renninger. Fountain creeps in from first, as does O'Reilly from third. Renninger swings away, fouls it behind her. Ball comes on the field one complex from field two. Susie picks it up and throws it over to Fountain, who gives it to personnel in the Eagles dugout on the first base side. Burnham looks into Benoit and is ready to deliver. Gets a swinging strikeout, her third K of the second game here. Seahawks now have two outs. Looking to make Holly Bettinger the third out and freeze Schrader at third base. Benoit frames the outside pitch, gets the call strike. Not so fortunate on that similar delivery. One on one count to Bettinger. She's the first baseman for the Eagles. Bettinger is from Hummelstown, Pennsylvania. She follows it right back here to shake up my camera. 
Thankfully, not on the camera. We'll adjust it momentarily. And the camera is attached to the fence with a product called the viewthrough.com. Strike swinging to end the inning. No further runs for the Eagles. They do get one run in the inning on one hit. Two errors for the Seahawks, one left on base. She was stranded at third. And Burnham finishes with a couple of strikeouts in the frame. We will be back for the top of the third inning after this. here in Claremont, Florida, where Sal Virginia's second baseman, Jenna Edine, is the leadoff hitter for the Seahawks in a 1-1 game. Sal Virginia scored his run in the top of the second. Juniata followed with a, a run in the bottom of the second. 1-1 here in Claremont, Florida, Hancock Park. Edine gets her second hit of the game. She had a first inning single and follows that with a third inning single. This one to left field. Brings up catcher Genevieve Benoit. Benoit's walk off home run, her first of the year, came against WPI in an earlier 11 3 win this morning. Her walk off home run ended the game after. In the fifth inning, we were unable to complete five innings thanks to her walk-off home run. Balls in the dirt and enables Adin to scamper over to second base. Rachel Smith held on to it wisely. We're like taking a few practice cuts outside of the box, getting some instructions from Jessica DiPolito on the third base coach's box. Smith steps up in her, catches Crouch, and provides opposing instructions for her infielders. The bun is down, third, fielded by third base over to first. Put out is made there, but the sacrifice bun is successful. It gets Adine over to third base with one out. 5-4 on the sacrifice. Freshman third baseman Kara O'Reilly now steps into the batter's box for the Seahawks. She also gets instructions from Jessica DiPolito down the third base box. Adine's on third, one out, top of the third, 1-1 game. Gorba delivers. 
A bunt in the air foul. Not in the air enough for the first baseman, Holly Bettinger. When I talked with Jennifer Jones, the SID from Juniata, she uh, chuckled when she knew the roster that I'd be dealing with. I've got two Hollies. And they, they follow each other in the batting order. One's a Renninger, the other's a Bettinger. My bet is that they're not related, despite the common first name and the very similar last name. O'Reilly looks at a called strike. She's got a Dean on third. A chance to put the Seahawks up 2-1 if she can deliver. She's got a 1-2 count. Facing Gorber from Judiana. She chases a high pitch. Out of the strike zone. She's able to get a piece of it and follow it back. Away from our camera, thankfully. Shout out to Kelly Scaffarello, who may be in the air or may have landed at one of her two stops on the day. She's heading to Minneapolis, but eventually we'll get to Lincoln, Nebraska for her committee meetings with the National Track and Field Division Three committees. Her flight was taking her through Minneapolis into Lincoln, Nebraska. Hopefully she has as good weather as we're seeing here. O'Reilly watches the ball go by high. She's got the left-handed hitting Sarah Nelson on deck. One out here in the top of the third. Adine's on third base. Base hit up the middle by O'Reilly, brings home Second run of the game for the Seahawks. Adine scores. 2-1, Salve Regina. RBI for Kara O'Reilly. Nelson now bats with O'Reilly on first. One out in the frame. Nelson grounded to first base, her first at bat. She gets this one through the right side, past a diving second baseman, Lindsey Kosicki. And the aggressive base running on the Seahawks allows them to have runners at second and third. As O'Reilly never hesitated, slid into third base as the throw went in. Nelson grabs second. There may be some changes in the Juniata lineup. Runners at second and third here in the top of the third with one out. Substitution at pitcher for the Eagles. Taking Gorber's place on the mound. It's a left-handed throwing. Number 23, Allie Smith. Smith is already in the batting lineup as the DH, so she'll stay in that position batting order-wise and now become the Eagles' second pitcher of the game with the Seahawks. First batter she will face will be Lauren Fountain, the Salva Regina first baseman. Fountain had a single in her first at bat in the second inning. She saw Salve's first run when Lexi Susie delivered her on a sacrifice fly to center field. So Rachel Smith, excuse me, Allie Smith, the new pitcher for Juniata. There is 
and she's p throwing her pitches to Rachel Smith, the catcher. And as luck would have it, on the Eagle lineup, the Smiths follow each other in the batting order. Allie Smith, the cleanup hitter for the Eagles, is now pitching here in the third inning. South Virginia has a 2-1 lead as Fountain pops it up to short. No force except for first base, but the shortstop gloves it for the second out. Nelson and O'Reilly stay at second and third, respectively. Lauren Nicholson, who also had a second inning single, comes to the plate with an opportunity to drive in two runs. She fouls that out of play, off to the right. It hits the roof of a building that's the restrooms on the field here. Two one score, South Virginia leads Juniata. Top of the third, one run in in this inning, and they threaten for more. Bounce it back to Allie Smith. She throws over to Holly Bettinger, who makes the final out. Salva gets one run in the inning, but leaves two with one run, three hits, no errors, and two left. South Virginia will now take the field for the bottom of the third, and the Eagles will come to bat. We're back here at Hancock Park, field one, for the bottom of the third inning with the Juniata Ingles up at bat against the South Virginia University Seahawks. Seahawks lead this game two to one after a run in the second and a run in the third. Juniata scored its run in the second inning. Ali Bainey represents the top of the order for the Eagles and she leads off the bottom of the third. Files the ball just out of reach of Lauren Fountain at first base. Speaking with the, the game's home plate umpire, he is related to the long time, and when I say long time, 65 year broadcaster for Mississippi State football and other sports, Mr. Crystal at Mississippi State. Bunted by Bainey, she reaches for a safely. O'Reilly and Burnham get in there, but no play on at first. Bainey was caught looking by Burnham in the first inning. Now reaches safely on a bunt. No outs here in the top of the third. That brings up Nikia Ulrich. The second baseman for the Eagles. She bunts it in the air. Burnham catches it in foul territory. The base runner was in her way for an attempted throw down first to double up Bainey. So Benoit wisely held on to the ball. She's got the first out. Bainey's at first. Rachel Smith, the catcher, is at the plate.
Rachel Smith reached on an error in the first. This is her second at bat. Allie Smith, the pitcher, is on deck. With one out here in the bottom of the third. That's lifted to the outfield. Davin's got a ways to go. It's going to one bounce, two bounce to the fences. Davin gets it into second, but Bainey comes all the way around to score. Bukowski almost had a play at second on Rachel Smith. Smith gets the RBI double to right center and now stands at second representing the go-ahead run if her battery mate Allie Smith can get a hold of one. It's a 2-2 game here in the bottom of the third. Both teams have had single runs in the second and third innings. One out for the Eagles. They've got a runner on second. Rachel Smith on the, the bag. Allie Smith at the plate. Smith will be followed by Paige Jennison, the center fielder. <laughs> Allie Smith creeps up the batter's box. Does an offer at the Burnham offering. Rachel Smith is on second. She hit the double to right center that drove in Allie Banny. Burnham's pitch is outside to Allie Smith. Full count for the Eagles pitcher. Jenna Dean gloves it for the out at first. Fountain covering. Fountain races it into the circle. Hands it off to Burnham at the circle. Rachel Smith advanced to third on the ground out to second. Paige Jennison now the batter for the Eagles. She drew a walk as the leadoff hitter in the second inning and came around to score the Eagles run. She now has two outs with a runner at third. Called strike. 0 and 1 count to Dennison. Second pitch is low in the dirt. Dennison has a 1 1 count. Side pitch gets called for strike two. One and two to Dennison, two outs. Rachel Smith on third base representing the go-ahead run for the Eagles in the bottom of the third inning. Dennison lifts that over Fountain's head. And Bainey scores the go-ahead run. Two-out single. Produces the third run and the second run of the inning for the Eagles. Third baseman Lindsey Kosicki now bats for the Eagles. She 
she sacrificed in the second inning to move Dennison over. Dennison reached third on that play and scored on an error. That pitch gets fouled off the right field fence. Runner is going on it. Throw down by Benoit. Doesn't get there in time. Hits Dennison's back as she slides in safely with a stolen base. Kosicki now has a runner in scoring position with two outs. Gets instructions from her third base coach with a one-two count. Fountain grabs the ball on the slow roller. She runs over to the first base bag and tags it herself for the final out of the inning. Two runs on three hits, no errors. One left on base for the Eagles. After three innings of play, Juniata leads Salva Regina three to two. with a lot of noise from three other fields being overheard on field one where South Virginia bats in the top of the fourth inning. Nikki Bukowski is the leadoff batter in this frame. Seahawks trail the Eagles three to two. Eagles were able to get two runs out of their third inning. South Virginia had runs in the second and third. But now trails three to two. Bukowski is batting 500 on the season. All of her at bats this year have come today. First game against WPI in an 11-3 win. And she has one hit already in this game. The shortstop bats from the left side. She gets under it but sends it over the right fielder's head. Hits the bottom of the fence in the air. Bukowski look, looking for a triple. Slides in safely with a leadoff triple. Plenty of power from the freshman shortstop. That ball traveled high and far. Right fielder Holly Renninger did a great job of getting it back to the infield. 
But the Kotsky's wheels got it at a third base with a leadoff triple to bring up the top of the order, Alexi Susi. Susi now bats with a runner on third base. Bunts in the air and a nice diving stab by the third baseman, Lindsey Kosicki. Gets the first out of the inning off the bat of Lexi Susi. Kosicki reached over the foul line to make that grab. Not that the foul line was obstructing her, but she was charging and had to abruptly change directions to reach to her right side with the glove on the left hand. First pitch to the third batter of the inning, Kelly Davin, is a ball low. She has Bukowski on third, representing the tying run. Davin has a hit and two at bats today. She squares around, lets a ball go wide. Two and zero on the count to Davin, who's batting 370 on the season. Two and one after the foul ball. Correction on Davin's batting average. It's 300. I had Susie's batting average up on the screen. I hadn't completed her pop out to third yet. Now that we're back in real time with one out here in the top of the fourth, a 3-2 game. Juniata leads Salve Regina. Called strike two and two on Davin. She has Nikki Bukowski on third base with a leadoff triple. One now out now after Susie's pop up. 2-2 two -two count on Davin. Allie Smith, the second pitcher for Juniata, throws from the left side, gets a pop-up in foul territory. Catcher is unable to get a glove on it. She had it above her head momentarily, then chose to go with the underhanded catch and wasn't able to make the adjustment between overhead and underhand. So Davin has new life. Still has a 2-2 count from the lefty. And a swinging strike three. Davin goes down for the second out of the inning. Bukowski is still on third. The senior second baseman, Jenna Edin, is at the plate. Jenna has two hits and two plate appearances against Juniata. This is her first time facing Ali Smith. She fouls it back off the screen to our right. No harm on the camera. Salve Regina, two and five on the season. A win in the first game of the year and a win in the most recent game. Both wins have been by large margins. 13-2 against Houghton. That game went seven innings, the full seven innings. And then 11-3 against WPI earlier today. Adeen leaves that ball low. Gets the count in her favor. After a first pitch foul, she now has a 2-1 count. Sees a pitch on the outside, get corner, get called for a strike. Two and two, with two outs. Top of the fourth inning, 3-2 score for Juniata. Nikki Bukowski on third base with their 
a leadoff triple, hoping to come home, but gets stranded following a strikeout swing in for Adin. Allie Smith is able to strand Nikki Bukowski at third base. No runs, one hit, one error in the inning. One left on base. Juniata will come up to bat in the bottom of the fourth with a 3-2 lead. Katie Schrader leads off the bottom of the fourth for the Eagles. WPI returned to our broadcast booth. They have a 4 0 lead in their second game, so good luck to the engineers. Schrader had a single in her first at bat. She looks at the Burnham offering for a called strike. Burnham's got a little bit of a hop on her foot as she toes the rubber. Fountain's able to reach up and grab the shot by Schrader. First out of the inning. Line out to first base, Lauren Fountain. That brings up the right fielder, Holly Renninger. Renninger was a strikeout victim in the second inning. One of four Burnham K's in the game. Inside for a strike. Benninger is followed by the right left-handed hitting Holly Bettinger as Jenna Adeen gets underneath the pop-up by Renninger. So Holly Renninger is down on the pop-up to second base. And it brings up Holly Bettinger, the first baseman for the Eagles. Rusty Egan's gonna go catch the Phillies game. Philadelphia Phillies, that is. Foul back here off the fence. Shakes the camera up just a bit. No major adjustments necessary. Salva Regina has two runs, nine hits, three errors. The home team Eagles in this game have three runs on four hits, one error. We're in the bottom of the fourth. Dominique P Berman pitching. And she gets Holly Benninger a strikeout looking. So after four full innings of play, Burnham got that one, two, three inning in the fourth. We'll be back for the top of the fifth 
with Juniano leading Salve Regina 3-2. We're back here for the top of the fifth inning at Hancock Park, Field One in Claremont, Florida. Salve Ridge University bats in the top of the fifth, trailing 3 2 to Juniata. Allie Smith is the second pitcher of the game for the Eagles. When she came on to pitch for the Eagles, they were trailing 2 to 1. So she is now the pitcher of record as the Eagles took the lead in the third inning with two runs. Genevieve Benoit leads off for the Seahawks in this inning. The catcher for the Seahawks has a 391 batting average. She has hit safely in the Seahawks' first seven games, 0 for 2 currently in this game. Strikeout swinging and a grounder to, or a sacrifice to third base. Benoit works the walk. She becomes a leadoff runner on first. So no outs here in the top of the fifth inning. Benoit on first with the walk. O'Reilly at the plate. She's facing Smith. And grounds it to third. The turn for the double play attempt. Gets away from first base. Benoit forced that second. 5-4 on the play. O'Reilly safe on the field is choice, bringing up Sarah Nelson with one out. O'Reilly on first. Jennifer Jones, the Juniata Sports Information Director, on hand with a camera, capturing some footage of the Eagles. The Eagles have the 3-2 lead here in the top of the fifth inning. We're just over an hour into the game, which started later than the 11 o'clock schedule time. Nelson swings and misses on an offering from Allie Smith. to count to the senior left fielder hitting from the left side that pitch is swung under the ball for a strikeout swinging two outs now with O'Reilly still at first base Lauren Fountain the first baseman for the Seahawks at the plate 
Lauren Fountain had a base hit in the second inning. She scored the Seahawks' first run. She watches strike one go by. Off-speed pitch, rides high as it crosses the plate. Ball one. That's a low pitch that Fountain stays away from. She's got the count in her favor, 2-1. Two, two outs, O'Reilly on first. The lefty Ali Smith delivers. Grounded a third, over to first. That makes three outs here in the top of the fifth for the Seahawks. No runs, no hits, no errors. One left on base for Salvador Jr. in the fifth inning. They go to the bottom of the fifth. They'll be taking the field. And the Eagles will be coming to bat with a 3-2 lead. Burnham toes the pitching slab for her fifth time on the circle. She faces leadoff hitter and shortstop Allie Bainey. Bainey is one for two on the game. She had a third inning single and came around to score. Juniata leads here in the bottom of the fifth, three to two. Pop up on the infield because he calls for it and gets it. Put up by the shortstop for the first out of the fifth inning. Nakia Ulrich at the plate for the Eagles. She's the second baseman. Ulrich has been retired twice by Burnham. First pitch, she fouls off to the right. South Regina hopes to keep Ulrich from doing what her hometown states. She is from Homer, New York. Couldn't check her swing. It is a strike. Oh, two count to Ulrich. Who has the bases empty with one out. Sarah Nelson does her civic duty and retrieves a ball for an adjacent field. Burnham's last pitch was way outside. That's what you do in an 0-2 count. Now it's one and two. Ulrich puts the outside pitch in play. Jenna Dean picks it up and throws to Lauren Fountain for the second out of the inning. Yeah. 
Rachel Smith, the catcher, now batting for the Eagles here in the fifth inning with two outs. Rachel Smith is a senior from Martinsburg, Pennsylvania. She was homeschooled. She had a double and an RBI in her last at bat. This bat ball is lifted up foul. Bright makes a good chase after it. it falls after scraping off of the fence. That's a strike on Smith. Oh and two count. Burnham gets set to deliver. Rachel Smith way out in front on that Burnham offering for a foul. Still an 0-2 count. Burnham says hello to the camera with that pitch. She's hoping I get to call her sixth strikeout on the one-two pitch offering to Rachel Smith. Now two and two. Come on, Colby. Two outs here. Bottom of the fifth, Juniata leads three to two. We're at Hancock Park in Claremont, Florida. It's field one in the complex. Bukowski is able to get back on the outfield grass and grab that Rachel Smith soft line drive for the final out of the inning. It's a 1-2-3 inning for Burnham. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left for the Eagles. After five full innings, Juniata leads 3-2. back to Claremont, Florida, where the Juniata Eagles lead the Seahawks of South Virginia University, 3-2, here at the start of the top of the sixth. Allie Smith, the pitcher for Juniata. She relieved Lindsey Gorber. Lauren Nicholson puts the ball in play. Nice grab by the shortstop on one hop. She fires over to first base for the first out of the inning. Nicholson was first pitch swinging. Bringing up the shortstop, Nikki Bukowski. With one out in the top of the sixth. First pitch is high. Ball one. Yeah. 
More noise coming from the Seahawk dugout. Using the bench as an artificial noise maker. Strike over the plate. One on one count to Bikovsky. Lefty on lefty. Foul ball by Bikovsky. Bikovsky's last at bat was a triple. That followed a single that she had in the second inning. She's two for two on the second game here. Her triple was wasted in the last at bat. Smith was able to strand her at third base after that leadoff triple. Now Bikovsky bats with one out and a one two count. Bukowski swings through the high pitch, strike three. Gets us to the top of the order for the Seahawks. Salvarigina has Lexi Susi at bat. Susi is the Seahawks leading hitter. She's yet to reach base in this game after a three for four game against WPI. Ball outside to Susie with two outs here in the top of the sixth inning. Susie will be followed by Kelly Davin if she can extend the inning. Corner infielders for Juniata are tight to the lines, both in a few feet from the bag. And Susie gets hit by the Allie Smith offering. Count was in Smith's favor, but that pitch got away from her. Gets Susie to first base with two outs. And now Kelly Davin at the plate. Kelly Davin has a first inning single to her credit. A ground at a short and a strikeout swing and in the next two at bats. She's got Susie on first with two outs. Gavin liked that offering from Smith, took a good cut at it, fouled it off to the right side. Juniata leads, three to two. We're in the top of the sixth inning. The game is official, but we're not gonna get any rain today. Susie off and running. Shortstop's gotta make the throw to first, but Gavin beats it out with her speed. Infield hit for Kelly Davin. Helped out by the running Susie. No force at second for Allie Bainey, the shortstop for the Eagles. First and second now for senior Jenna Dean. She's got Susie in scoring position at second, Davin at first. Jenna Dean has two hits on the day. On the game correction, she had a hit earlier against WPI. She has two hits against Juniata. Two outs here on the top of the six. Two runners on base for the Seahawks. Senior Jenna Dine now batting. Inside pitch gets called for a strike. Jenna Adin has played second base both games today. Saw some time at shortstop earlier this week. Oh, 
0-2 pitch to Dean is a strike swinging. No runs on one hit, no errors. Two left for the Seahawks in their top of the six. The Eagles will come to bat with a 3-2 lead in the bottom of the six. Before we start the bottom of the sixth inning with the Eagles batting against the Seahawks here, Patricia Burnham, the mother of pitcher Dominic Burnham, the grandmother Grandma. of pitcher Dominic Burnham, let me correct that, would like to share a special message to folks back home. Hi, Jessica and Anthony. We miss you. We love you. Thank you. Thank you, Patricia Burnham. And nice wishes to Jessica and Anthony back home. Dominique Burnham is pitching in the sixth inning. She faces her counterpart, Allie Smith, leading off the bottom of the six for the Eagles. Allie Smith follows Burnham's first pitch off to the left side. All one counts. Allie Smith from Dominique Burnham. Burnham gets the outside pitch, called for a strike, 0 and 2 to Allie Smith. 3-2 lead here for the Eagles. They've been out hit 10 to 4 by the Seahawks. But on the scoreboard it shows 3-2 Juniata. Smith swings on the 0-2 pitch and fouls it off to the left. Caro Rally gets it back to Dominique Burnham for the pitcher circle. Smith has been handling the Seahawk batters in crucial situations. She's 0 for 2 at the plate today. A pop out to Kyra O'Reilly in the first, and then a grounder to Jenna Dean in the third. Out at that swing, ground to Jenna Dean who flips the fountain. That makes us out of the sixth inning. A 4-3 put out. Bringing up the center fielder, Paige Dennison, for the Eagles. Paige is one for one. A second inning walk and an RBI single in the third. She's facing Dominique Burnham for the third time today. Calls pitch from... One out here, bottom of the sixth at Hancock Park, field one. Strike two to Dennison. Burnham just worked her inside and outside. She's got an 0 and 2 count. Waste the pitch up high. Dennison leaves it alone. Gets it to a one and two count. <laughs> this game started around 11.25, so we're an hour and 25 minutes into it. it just turned 12.50, 12.51. We have a 2-2 two -two count on the Juniata pitch. Uh, center fielder, Paige Dennison. And on our full count. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Third baseman Kosicki waits in the on deck circle. Burnham's full counter offering was low and outside to Dennison. So Dennison works a one out walk, gets the first base to bring up third baseman Lindsey Kosicki. Kosicki has twice been a ground out victim against Burnham. First was a sacrifice bunt to O'Reilly, who threw over to Adeen in the second inning. And then in the third inning, Lauren Fountain handled it unassisted at first base. 0 for 2 for Kosicki on the day against Burnham. She flares that one and it lands just inside the infield dirt and inside the left field foul line for an infield single. Dennison moves over to second. Kosicki's now at first. One out for Katie Schrader, the left fielder for the Eagles. Jessica DiPolito is going to gather the Seahawk infield and meet at the pitcher circle with Dominique Burnham. She's got a first and second situation with one out. Dennison on the second sack, and Kosicki just reaching on the infield hit at first base. Schrader's at the plate, and when she gets her chance to swing, she'll be looking to improve to two and three on the day. She had a second inning single, and then lined out to first base to the hopping Lauren Fountain. The meeting at the circle is finished. Dominique Burnham adjusts her socks and her cleats. A little adjustment around the neckline as well for the right-handed pitcher for the Seahawks. Holds the glove thigh high with the ball in it. Big lead at second for Dennison. She gets back because Adine says so. Burnham starts her preparation. O'Reilly's creeping in, and Fountain are creeping in from the corners for Salve Regina. Schrader showed bunt, pulled back, and took a little check swing at it for a strike. Hello to Susan and Stephen Napier, who just returned from the hospital with their daughter Katie Napier. Nothing too serious, just a case of pink eye that the freshman right fielder has to deal with. That gives an opportunity for Kelly Davin out in right field today. Ball high to Schrader. She has Dennison on second, Kosicki on first. She has a 2 2 count. Two on with one out. Line shot. Bukowski grabs it and gets the fielder's choice put out at third base with O'Reilly covering. Dennison is off the base pass. Schrader reaches first, and Kosicki moves over to second. Two outs now in the bottom of the sixth inning. Brings up Holly Renninger, the Eagles right fielder. Renninger is 0 for 2 with a strikeout. One of five strikeouts on the day for Dominique Burnham. Foul tip. Strike two. Salva Regina is the away team. Two hits, excuse me, two runs, ten hits, three errors. 
home team is Juniata. They are batting here in the bottom of the sixth. Bukowski gets under the final out of the inning. A pop-up that she handled in foul territory. Renninger makes the final out for the Eagles. Who finished the frame with no runs, one hit, no errors, and two left on base. We'll be back for the top of the seventh inning with Salva Regina trailing 3-2. Genevieve Benoit will lead off the top of the seventh for the Seahawks, who trail here 3-2 against the Juniata Eagles. The Eagles are 1-3 coming into this game, and the Seahawks are 2-5. The Eagles just lost their previous game 3-2, but now have a 3-2 lead against the Seahawks. retired by a line out to the shortstop that leaves her hitless in this game she's been riding a seven game hit streak into the eighth game of the season for the Seahawks <laughs> O'Reilly puts it in play to the third baseman he quickly gets the second out of the inning. 5-3 on the putout. With two outs here in the top of the seventh inning, Sarah Nelson representing South Virginia's final chance. The senior left fielder has a single in three at-bats. She faces Allie Smith. A fellow lefty. <laughs> Swing and a miss for Nelson. Nelson in an 0-2 hole against Allie Smith. Two outs here in the top of the seventh inning. Salva Virginia trailing 3-2. Yeah. Smith gets that third strike over the bat of Nelson. Retiring the side in order in the ninth, in the seventh. 1-2-3, go the Seahawks. Final score in the game two for the Seahawks versus the Eagles. Juniata three, Salve Regina two. We'll be back with a wrap up after this.
welcome back to Claremont, Florida at Hancock, Hancock Parks Field 1 in Claremont where Sal Regina just finished its eighth game of the season, a 3-2 loss to Juniata Eagles. Eagles had a run in their second, two in their third, and that was all they would need as Salve only scored one in its second, one in its third. The Seahawks out hit the Eagles 10-5. For the Seahawks, two runs on 10 hits, three errors. For the Eagles, three runs on five hits, one error. Nikki Bukowski had a leadoff triple that was wasted at third base by the next three batters in the Seahawk lineup. Dominique Burnham struck out six. Allie Smith came on in relief for the Juniata Eagles and she helped, she picked up the victory. She improved to one and one in the season. Overall, the Eagles are two and five. They have three, uh, a pair of 3-2 games today. They lost earlier 3-2, and then they defeat the Seahawks just recently 3-2. For the Seahawks at the plate. Lexi Susi went over two. Kelly Davin, two for four. Jenna Adin, two for four. Also picking up two hits was Nikki Bukowski. Single hits came on the bats of Cara O'Reilly, Sarah Nelson, Lauren Fountain, and Lauren Nicholson. The Seahawks have an off day on Wednesday, March 12th, and they'll be back in action on Thursday. That schedule will bring you 9 a.m. games and a 1 p.m. game. At 9 a.m., the Seahawks will face the Polar Bears of Bowdoin College, a New England school out of Maine. And at 1 o'clock on Thursday, the Seahawks will face St. Lawrence. We've had a lot of fun bringing the action here in the first eight games. I will be moving on as a broadcaster for South Virginia Baseball to Fort Myers. On Wednesday, South Virginia Baseball will face St. Lawrence in a nine-inning game. And then on Thursday and Friday, Fredonia State in a doubleheader Thursday. And Friday, Swarthmore College in a doubleheader. Seahawk action will continue from Florida the rest of this week. Please tune in. Thank you to Lynn, Taylor, and Kiernan. Let me do what I love to do. Thank you to Kelly Scaffarella for her help throughout the week. Thank you to Coach DiPolito and Sarah Ramsey and the Seahawks softball squad. Enjoyed interviewing Lexi Susie and Genevieve Benoit after a Seahawk 11-3 victory over WPI earlier. Both Susie and Benoit hit home runs for the Seahawks in that win. Susie's was a grand slam in the second inning, and Benoit's was a two-run blast to left field that ended the game with an 11-3 score in five innings. Sal Virginia takes its day off with a two and six record, and they'll resume play on Thursday against Bowdoin.